Hello friends, it is I, James Calm, your half-assed reporter, the guy on the bike. Have you missed me? I have been uh, on the down though for about a month and a half, but I'm back. We are on the west side at the Jacob Javits Center. We're going to try to go in here and get a brief glance at the 2023 edition of the Armory Show. Stay tuned. Okay, gosh, this is fantastic. I was able to schmooze my way in here, but gosh, I've only got about... Uh, they said I could get in without a ticket. They just looked at me and they felt so sad for me. They said, go on, you got 20 minutes to go. Thank you. Okay, well... <laughs> So we've got 25 minutes. We're not going to get a lot, but I've been covering this show since probably the mid 90s. I'll give you a brief rundown as we run through the Michael Rosenfeld Gallery, William T. Williams. I think it was Pat Hearn called a lot of. Paul Morris and Matthew Marks actually founded this show. The first couple of editions were at the Gramercy Park Hotel. Oh gosh. It's an Agnes Pelton. Here's one of my favorites, Paul Cadmus. It's titled Two Dancers, number 21966. Alfonso Sorio. Gosh. Well, so the uh, first couple of editions were at the Gramercy Park Hotel, and then they actually got smart and they had the second bunch of, or the second location was at the actual armory building where the armory show was held, Nancy Grossman. And uh, that was where they got the name for the armory show. And that's a reference to the historical 1913 show that introduced America to modern art and I think was maybe the first time New Yorkers were able to see a substantial amount of work by people like Cezanne, Matisse, Picasso, Barack, maybe even Duchamp and Picabia. Then they uh, started to show at one of the piers downtown around Canal Street and uh, They stayed down there for a couple years, and then probably for about 15 years, they were up at another location at the west end of 56th Street. And at that point, they started breaking this up into various sections, so they had the modern section, the contemporary section. You can go back in the files, I think I probably covered at least seven or eight of those. Well, even if I had two or three hours, I could never really cover the whole show because I think there's something like 230 galleries from all over the world here. I think the other interesting thing is that uh, I believe earlier this year that Freeze bought the Armory show and uh, reschedule it. Normally this show is happening in late winter, early spring. So maybe the end of February, beginning of March. And uh, Freeze rescheduled this and I don't know whether that was because they wanted to avoid the competition. 
I think the free show this year was in May. Anyway, that brings us up to the present. Let's see if we can see some interesting things in the 20 minutes left for us. Let's uh, pan over the 303 Gallery booth. We've been visiting these folks here in Chelsea for 20 years. This is by Sue Williams. I say I'm not going to get all the names because we are running and gunning. It's got to be Mary Heilman. Uh-oh. The fair is closing in 15 minutes. Run and gun. Morania Mercier. Jocelyn Kanyer. Okay, looks like uh, Jocelyn Conley has got a whole one person show here. I like it. Bruegel references here. Chachuea. <laughs> well, I was uh, wondering about how the uh, new location for this fair would work out. I was so used to going to the pier and kind of enjoying the wind off the river that this was going to be a new thing. It's not that far away. So this is the Yavuz Gallery. Yavuz Gallery? Sydney? This is the Revolver Gallery, Lima, Buenos Aires, New York. And I guess that uh, if you're that hip, you don't even have to put up any wall labels, so I don't know who the, or what the title of this artist is. But I like the uh, kind of the physical construction of the picture plane and the kind of rumpled and uh, cut into and folded surfaces. Kind of makes me think of Stephen Perino. Let's see if we can bump into some of our old friends at some point here, maybe not. Okay, here's some uh, fun pieces at the Christian Helsgerger Gallery. London, Berlin, West Palm Beach, Schloss Goring. Joachim Lambrechts. Oh, 
Okay, gee, I like this. This is kind of a uh, interesting discovery. Joaquin. Belga cigarettes. Okay, they don't talk about uh, the mediums, but I would say it looks to me like uh, graphite, oil, acrylic, oil stick on paper. Oh, that's very nice. Okay, how do we pronounce this? People say I make fun of people's names, but when I see a spelling like that, I have to question myself. Half Gallery, New York. We bop in and see these guys on occasion on the Lower East Side. Can you tell me what this artist's name is? Uh, Yuan Fang did the paintings. The Yuan Fang? Okay, and these are oil paintings? Is that what this is? Or? Uh, they're acrylic with oil stick on top. Acrylic yeah. with oil stick. Of course they are. Okay, thank you. And I would say that these are probably something like... 7 by 6 feet. This one is probably... Oh gosh, 7 by 9? Okay, I like the subdued palette and the, uh, looks like there's a lot of scraping and sweeping. Okay, I like the uh, ceramics, looks like porcelain. Oh gosh. Okay, here's the fun part of the show is when they ring the bell and everybody starts folding up their tents. <laughs> Liberty Street Collective. So this is a flashy piece. James Richard Edwards. Crowded by the King 2023 acrylic oil pastel glitter textile and mixed media 72 by 72. Well, I've seen a few people wearing some outfits that would match the frame here. Okay, this is kind of a nice piece. I like the uh, weird textural things. Jose Parla. Vision writing 2023. Acrylic oil paint, enamel, and collage on canvas. Okay, attention guests, keep running, and I think the funny thing will be that uh, even when they announce that the show is closed, that that will only be a suggestion. <laughs> okay, Casey Gleghorn, congratulations. You won the Gramercy International 
Art Fair booth prize? Was that? Free booth, baby. Congratulations, man. Tell us about the show. Valentina Baccarella. This time her focus is, uh, you know, Lulia Kimoshenko, who's like this uh, power woman, the Ukrainian prime minister for the uh, circa mid 2000s. And uh, she like loved the way she looks. She loved the way she works, and she just tends to focus on on this this right here. It's been a real popular show. Everything. I want to. I don't want to jinx it. I think it's sold out. But you know. Okay. Congratulations. Really well. I'm gonna take a closer look at some of these. And this is collage. Nope. Image transfer and oil. Image transfer and oil paint. Okay. We did that show with her with the madams uh, a while ago. Ah, okay, sure. And does she actually paint in the Ukraine, or is she a New Yorker now? Yeah, she's a New Yorker, which is even crazier <laughs> because the Ukrainian people come in here and are just blown away by the show. They loved it. Well, I've been watching reruns of the Americans, a, uh, I think it was an FX production from the early 20-teens, 2015 to 2019, something like that. Matthew Ray and some other actors, and uh, of course it's about a sleeper cell of uh, Soviet secret agents in Washington, D.C. And they actually have a lot of uh, Images of diplomats and people in Moscow and various other places doing their little political thing. This is the artist. Wow. Congratulations. Show looks fantastic. Okay, I'm going to keep moving. I got five minutes. Way to go. Okay. Well, I was wondering if we would bump into some friends, and we did. Paragon. Grace and Perry, Vote For Me 2023 Woodcut. Edition of 36, signed by the artist. So I guess that is the iconic and lovable Margaret Thatcher. Well, I actually... I have my questions about a lot of the printmaking being done these days, but something like this, I really see this as a tour de force, and, uh... God, I would just roughly estimate that he's probably got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... 12 blocks? 12 different colors? Let's uh, look at some other things here. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's taking some Damien Hurst and kind of chopping it up. Sarah Morris, Lunar 2022. I thought this might be Gary Hume. Derek Eller. Jameson Green. Okay, uh like kind of a reference to uh, Van Gogh's potato eaters, maybe? Okay, we got a couple of pieces by E.J. Hauser, one of our old friends. You can go look through the files. I think we got a couple of shows of hers, at least. Scott Overt. Looks 
Looks like they got some rubbings in here. William Gothbert Faulner. I wonder if these have went out to the graveyard and actually did some some rubbings on some gravestones. Maybe. 1835 to April 21st, 1910. This is a fun piece. Austin Martin White. This is actually on uh, a screen. I wonder if this is one of the things where he's uh, squished the paint through from the back side of the screen. That's why you have this very strange textural quality. Okay, the invisible dog this is actually kind of a uh, artist space in my neighborhood over on Bergen Street in Carroll Gardens, Cobble Hill, something like this. We go over and uh, see some shows and I've seen some theater productions there. Okay, Brooklyn is in the house. Oh no, don't tell me they're gonna start doing the light out thing. Yes, oh they are. <laughs> Okay, boy, these people jumped the gun. They are already packing up to get the heck out of here and go back. This is the Tate White Chapel Gallery. Go back to London. Kind of like some of those. Oh, so this is a very practical approach. It's like we just used the packing crates as the exhibition plinths. And, uh... And we can pack up extremely fast when we get to the end here. Can you tell me the name of the ceramic artist here? It's Renata Peterson. Renata Peterson. Thank you. That's beautiful. I want to be a man. keep running. Oh my god. It's Scott Ogden and Shrine. I'm good. What's the name of the artist? This is Thomas Dillon. Thomas Diller? Dillon. Dillon. Like Matt Dillon and all those folks. And this work is acrylic on canvas? Acrylic enamel house paint? <laughs> uh, liquid paper. Paint sticks. Yeah, okay, this is fun. Kind of splashy. Oh, that's interesting. It was just saying that the uh, things are like total action painting and there's splashing and all this stuff going on like a Jackson Pollock, but then you've got the little goofy eyes that somehow... Uh, anthropomorphize the paint slathers. Okay, you heard that, folks? <laughs> 50,000. And they sold. All right. Thanks, Scott.
Well, I imagine we've probably run beyond the uh, closing time. Sir, Cobb make, out, sir. make my way out? Please. Thank you. Okay. The exhibit is now closed. The theater, the, <laughs> the exhibit is now closed. Cobb Gallery, London. You can see how <laughs> this guy is so authoritative that everybody he comes by starts running to the exits. Yes. JDJ Gallery. Turn Gallery Nassau. Okay. Oh, I like this. Some very intense textile work. Colonial swag. Okay, the lady is engaged in a conversation with some very enthusiastic viewers, so I'm not going to ask, but I, like I say, I guess if you're a real hip gallery like this, you don't even have to bother to put up name tags. Okay. Well, I like this artist's technical approach, a lot of interesting things, so we've got, uh, this looks like some kind of digital tapestry weavings that have been cut out and then collaged onto it's like some kind of photo prints that are then layered under lacquer and then you've got other parts that are padded and stuffed oh that's juicy Okay, so I'm reading on the sign, and I assume that this must be the work of April B. B E Y. And I guess this would be like the uh, features room where you have galleries with one person shows. We just bumped into Scott Ogden, and he used to share the space with Sergeant Stoddard. This is the work of Carlos Rosales Silva. Okay, I like uh, Carlos's palette, and he's using some kind of uh, what do they say? Crushed stone and glass bead in acrylic paint on panel. I like the uh, kind of hard-edged, swoopy curves and the, the flat color. Rampido. Oh, I kind of like the uh, jazzy little installation painting here as well. That's fun. Love grip. <laughs> okay, and all these pieces are 24 by 20 inches. Also, I'm thinking uh, The more of these you see together, the better it is. It's kind of a nice, nice feature. Here's a larger piece. We are, we are headed towards the exit. It's the diner gallery.
Serena Corda. Thank you to the Armory Show 2023. Public Gallery London, Catherine Hoffman. Okay, beautifully, uh, produced sculptures here and they kind of go well with the paintings. Oh God, art forum. I remember when people used to read that magazine. Okay, Conrad Macarelli. This is the Hollis Taggart Gallery. Uh, there is one piece I would like to look. Excuse me. Would like to take a look at here. This is a John Graham painting. I don't know yet what they're Late John Graham. You don't get a very You don't often get a chance to see a major Graham piece like this. maybe one of the largest John Graham paintings I've ever seen. Looks like it's on board. I think it was John Graham, Marshall Gorky, and Stuart Davis were known as the three musketeers of modern painting here in New York in the 30s, 30s and 40s. Gustave Lachez. That's fun. Well, okay. Martha Edelheit. We saw her show at Eric Firestone. This is Eric's booth. Oh gosh, that's a great piece right there. I think we'll wrap up here. So this has been James Calm reporting on the 2023 Armory Show here at the Javits Center in New York. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. Uh, I'm welcoming you back. I'm sorry I've been out of touch for about two months, but uh, we're going to try to get back and uh, get back to work. Thank you, Kate. Sir, do you have a badge? Do I have a badge? No. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah.